Well, hello again, guys. It's uh, Ben here from Airline to Sim, back again with another quick vlog. Look at this. It's two videos in two days. We disappear for a year and then two videos in two days. Uh, this is a bit like when I go to the gym in January, you know, and I'm there every day until about the 12th of January, in which case I maybe go once a week and, you know, by the end of February, they, they never see me again. I'm hoping that's not going to be the case, and I'll be here doing lots of these uh, little video logs for you over the next few weeks uh, and few months. A um, couple of things I just want to mention. Thank you so much for all the really nice comments that you've left on our, our last video, our very first vlog, where we told you about the training we're planning for the PMDG triple seven. Um, lots of really nice comments. I'm, I'm really touched. It's great to see that uh, so many of you enjoyed what we did with the Q400 and you're really excited about what we've got coming with the triple seven. So am I. It's uh, it's really nice to read. Thank you so much for that. Um, and a couple of comments about um, language and the speed of the speech. Now, I know that um, I'm certainly quite guilty, uh, as I think a lot of uh, people whose native language is English um, are of, of perhaps speaking too fast, uh, thinking that everyone is a native English speaker. And of course, uh, they're not. Um, most of the world isn't. Doesn't most of the world speak Chinese? Maybe I need to, maybe I need to learn to do the first Chinese uh, flight sim vlog. I think that would be, that would be big, huh? Um, so um, the, the, well, what am I trying to say? Um, the answer that I have for that is that, um, in terms of the speed of the speech and in terms of what we're going to do with the 777 training and the Airbus training and other things, um, is we're planning to have subtitles on the videos in English uh, and in German. And the reason for that is that um, is that English speaking markets and Germany are our kind of three biggest markets. Uh, and in fact, one day I might do a little video and just show you the percentage of buyers from different countries. Uh, it's a real eye-opener to see where people are buying. If, if our product, and I think it probably is uh, typical of, of where people uh, live who are buying flight sim products, uh, you'd be pretty interested to see the, the vast majority, probably um, two-thirds maybe, more than two-thirds, live in either the USA and Canada, um, the UK and Germany with the rest of the world uh, behind that. So that's why we'll do English and we'll do German. Uh, we have a really clever guy on the team uh, from Finland who, um, like many people who are not English, uh, seems to speak every language under the sun. He speaks Finnish, English, German, Spanish, uh, Swedish, uh, Norwegian. He's a really clever guy. He's much cleverer than me. Um, so he will be doing the uh, subtitles for us. Um, by the way, I'm I'm hoping this will happen. Uh, I'm saying it will happen. At the moment, we've got no idea how long it's going to take to do the subtitles. Uh, I know that over the course of seven or eight hours, which is the kind of average length of one of our training programs, if you can imagine how many words are spoken, it's hundreds, of, well, it's thousands, tens of thousands, I, I would imagine. Um, and it's an enormous task because every word needs to be transcribed and then translated. And it needs to be translated properly. We can't just put it into, you know, Babel Fish or whatever, it, Google Translate. And because it'll be it'll be gibberish. We'll be, you know, talking about some star arrival and, uh, and Babel Fish will just think we're trying to order a pizza or something in German. So we want to get it right. Um, so... I'm really hoping we can do that. That's the plan. English subtitles and German subtitles. And if we can make it happen, then uh, then we will. We'll do our best. Um, if if we have the resources to do it, if if it takes forever, if it's going to take us two years to do the subtitles, then uh, maybe it won't happen. But hey, we'll uh, we'll do our best. Uh, now, the reason I'm back today so quickly uh, with another vlog is just because this morning when I uh, woke up, um, my uh, email box went bing. Uh, and it was an email from Rex Studios with their new product, which is called uh, Rex Weather Architect, I think. Um, now, I'm a bit impulsive when it comes to buying flights in products. I always dive straight in. And I did with this one. Uh, so uh, I installed it and fired it up. And um, it's not quite what I thought it was, but that's probably because I um, didn't read the description properly. However, um, it is a really interesting development. Um, and I think there's some stuff in there that you'll find really interesting. So let's fire up the beast, the gaming machine, and uh, let's have a look. Uh, okay, so here we are on the desktop, and uh, let's have a little talk about this then. Weather Architect from Rex. Uh, this is a new little program. Now, let's just talk about weather 
generation in FSX generally. Uh, most people, I think, if you're a pretty serious simmer, you'll be using uh, this one, which is called Active Sky. Now, there are a couple of other ones. There's um, Opus, I think. There's FS Global Real Weather. Um, I've never really got on with um, Opus. I, it can kind of confuse you. I've always had problems installing it properly and everything else. I'm, I'm sure there are people who like it, uh, who get on with it, but I'm, I'm, I, I don't really know a lot about it. Um, FS Global Real Weather. I've also, uh, I've tried that. It's nice and simple. It's one of those programs that you can just kind of install uh, and you hit go and it just pulls down the real weather and that's it. Um, I don't think there are a ton of options with it. I don't think there's a huge amount you can do with it in terms of um, setting up historic weather and things like that. I think it's pretty much you set it up and it gives you what you get. Um, the the kind of, um, the big daddy, I think, is this one still, uh, which is Active Sky Next, which has been, around in the flight simulation world for, for kind of ever and a day. Um, and it really does give you the ability to uh, to do anything in, in the sim. Uh, the thing that I like about Active Sky Next is that it's kind of as kind of complicated or as simple as you want it to be. Um, if you just want to fly, so if you just want to load your sim up and you just want to fly with the weather uh, from a particular day, all you got to do is just go into weather configuration. This is my favorite uh, feature, uh, force historical time to sim time. And then you don't need to play around with the historical weather on here. You can simply just open Flight Simulator and choose a date in the past, because of course Flight Simulator has the little calendar thing on it as well. Uh, choose a date. So if I want to fire up the weather in uh, Los Angeles at LAX uh, on the 12th of uh, September 2014, uh, at three o'clock in the morning, I just set my sim to that time. And as long as I've got this checked in Active Sky Next, it will pull the weather down from that day and we're good to go. Beautiful, beautiful, simple. Uh, other things you can do, of course, is, uh, and there are other videos about how all this stuff works. That's an email coming through. Maybe it's from Rex with a new update. Um, you can change all these things. I mean, I, I generally keep the visibility pretty low. Uh, default is 100. I use 65. Um, that was after some feedback from uh, one of our real pilots who, who said, you know, generally speaking in the world, the upper visibility is is not that far. Uh, it's up to you. Um, sometimes it can be a bit soupy if you have it too low, but 65 kind of works for me. Um, and then again on the ground, I bring it back down to 50 because uh, I think you would need an exceptionally clear day uh, to, to be able to, to get the visibility at, at more than uh, kind of 50 miles uh, and there's other things as well but uh, hey that's all uh, stuff that you can uh, have a fiddle around with at your leisure um, now one thing that you can do in active sky next is that you can actually edit uh, the weather at a particular place so uh, for example in our cadet training we're going to go to uh, Guangzhou I hope that's how you say it. Guangzhou airport in China uh, it used to be Canton, which is the next big city uh, to the north of China on the mainland. And uh, we pull this down and, and it shows us what the weather's doing right now. This is the live weather. Uh, and at the moment, it is cloudy. Um, what's going on? The temperature's 34. The wind's 120 at 6 knots. Uh, the dew point's 26. And the visibility is good. It's uh, 10 plus uh, miles or over 10,000 meters. Um and there's some other things going on as well. If you get the TAF, uh, what have we got? We've got TS, so thunderstorms, rain. Um, God, there's stuff in here that... Uh, TAF's a bit... Uh, the, you know the easiest thing if you don't understand? Uh, just go to a uh, Meta converter. And this is a really cool one. Uh, this is called Meta Reader. And uh, all you do is you just uh, type it in there, press convert. And uh, it will it will give it for you uh, and kind of decodes it all. So there you go. This is for uh, Guangzhou in China on the 15th of the month, 150. Uh, scattered clouds, blah, 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 precipitation, all that kind of stuff. So that's basically telling you that the conditions are going to change a little bit. There will be some thunderstorms with broken clouds and all the rest of it. Uh, now, let's say that you go somewhere else in the world where perhaps there's not really a lot going on. So let's say Dubai. Uh, now, Dubai is, uh, this time of the year, generally sunny and very warm, which is what you can see. Uh, so at the moment, it is 40 degrees. Uh, visibility is not so good because I'm guessing it's probably a little bit hazy at this time of the year. Uh, and that's probably why, because the surface winds are 320 at 12 knots. 
uh, what you tend to find in this part of the world is that once the winds get up a little bit, 12 knots is enough to stir up the sand and the dust from the desert, and that will reduce the visibility right down. Now, let's say that we wanted to... Um, uh, let's say that we wanted to edit the weather a little bit and um, we wanted some uh, some thunderstorms uh, and we want to put those in. What we could do is uh, take out the NSC, uh, type in TS for thunderstorms uh, and then apply that to range. Uh, it will add some thunderstorm clouds for us, some cumulonimum. Uh, some clouds with thunder in them. Uh, and now when we go back, but look, it's generated some thunderstorms for us. So uh, we've now got uh, thunderstorms with rain uh, and uh, we've got clouds now at 100 feet and uh, it's all pretty horrible. So again, if you don't quite understand that, obviously it's, uh, it's decoded there or you could, uh, again, just chuck it into our METAR converter and uh, there we go. So this is a horrible day now. A clouds at 100 feet, uh, clouds at 4,000 feet. There's uh, nasty storm clouds. There's light thunderstorms uh, and rain. So suddenly our day is a lot more interesting in Dubai. Now, one thing that we can't really do with this, even though it's going to generate some thunderstorms, um, we can't really pick where they're going to be. They're going to be within 100 miles because when we went to uh, edit weather, you see there's a thing there which says the range uh, so you can have that globally so you can now apply this weather to the whole world which is not very realistic um, or you can just have it within a hundred mile range of Dubai um, that's kind of as far as you can fine-tune the weather in Active Sky Next um, however those clever guys at Rex have come up with this new program which is called Rex for Weather Architect now let's get out the way what it isn't First, uh, what it isn't is a live weather engine. So if you're expecting to be able to load up your weather at a particular date or time, uh, you cannot do that with this program. And I'll be honest with you, I've got a small admission, that's what I thought it did, and it doesn't. Um, what this allows you to do is actually generate a particular type of weather phenomenon in a geographical location. So the first thing you do when you install the program is it comes up like this, a settings button here it allows you to do all the settings so i've only got fsx steam installed on this particular machine at the moment um so it points to it it will find that automatically on the install oh little uh little in joke there for the email address just a little joke there wonder how he's getting on um you can enable logging there's a little radar thing i'll show you that in a moment and also if you've got rex 4 which i've got installed on my sims ssd um, then you can also, um, or it will normally just find that from the install, but you can point it to it manually in case it doesn't. Um, I'm not using P3D, so none of that matters. I'm not using DX10 either. I'm using DX9, so we'll leave that as it is. Um, then you can play around with stuff here as well. Turbulence, so this is the maximum setting, so I've just turned it all up to severe. Uh, I've not touched the wind settings. Uh, you can play around with that if you want. Uh, global visibility settings, again, I've set uh, the upper level to 50 the mid level to 50 and the low level to 30 um, and uh, again the global weather settings as I understand it if it's not generating a cell if it's not generating any weather um, then it will just give you some cirrus which are those uh, high altitude kind of uh, uh, the really light tiny little fluffy uh, stringy clouds um, it will just give you some of those so you can enable uh, some of those so that it's generating something rather than nothing um, and uh, you can also do the whole Rex 4 texture uh, configuration as well. This is very similar to the page from Rex 4 Direct. Now, let's go and create some weather. Now, there's some things that you can do. You can either um, do it by place or you can do it using a flight plan. So uh, let's uh, set up a test. So Dubai Thunderstorm. Uh, whoops test okay and then i could just type in either dubai and then it will come up with the uh, airport or i can type in omdb and it should come up with uh, dubai um i'm not sure what's the code for is it dxb i don't think it does it no it doesn't work on uh, uh doesn't work and it's not icao it's the other one isn't it the the other the other code apart from my cao uh so anyway let's stick with omd whoops omdb 
and there's Dubai. And now you can select the map size. So local will just kind of give you the kind of city and uh, a little distance to the left and to the right and above and below. Uh, country will give you the whole country. So in this case, the UAE uh, or continent. I'm not entirely sure for uh, Dubai. Does it give you the whole of Asia? Uh, I'm not entirely sure. But anyway, let's stick with the country for now. And then there you go. You can see. So it's uh, it's given me actually most of the Middle East. That's the whole of the Arabian Peninsula. Uh, there's Iran above us and then uh, India and Pakistan off to the right hand side here and even a little bit of, um, of Africa. Uh, so now what you can do is you can start drawing cells. Now that is a it's a bit far out that for me. So um, what we're going to do here, I'm just going to cancel that. Uh, and I'm going to make the map uh, just local. So let me go back to OMDB. And it'll be Dubai thunderstorm uh, storm test. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Dubai. Okay. Right. Now, as you can see, now the map is a little bit smaller. It's just giving us the kind of north side of the UAE. And what you do now is on the left hand side here, you see where it says all these different things, all these different weather phenomenon. You can now just click on these and draw them on the map, which is kind of cool. Um, now, here's another thing that you can do. Let me go back to create weather. Uh, I'm going to show you something else that you can do here. Um, you can also do a weather by flight plan. So again, you can choose a map size. You can either create a flight plan yourself or you can just import a flight plan from uh, a flight planner. So Simbrief uh, or uh, PFPX, or if you're uh, a real, um, uh, if you're a real noob, you could maybe create one in the FSX program itself. But does anyone use that anymore? Don't use it. It's rubbish. Use Simbrief or PFPX. Okay, so just browse for a flight plan. Uh, so I've got one here, which is from Dubai to Doha, uh, OMDB to OTHH, which is Hamad International, which is uh, Doha Airport in Qatar. Click OK, and look what you can see now is that it's uh, it's now drawn the the flight plan. Can you can you see that? Can you see that there? Um, let me go back to import flight plan. Try that again with a uh, with a bigger map size. Okay, so ah, there you go. There you go. Okay, so. Uh, Let's go heavy storm. You can also change the weather. And now what I can do is I can actually paint. Uh, see, I can now paint storms all over. Look at that. So let's have some light rain around there. And we'll have a light storm. So I'm not going to put snow because you wouldn't really get snow in that part of the world. So, so basically, all of this part of the Persian Gulf has an absolutely horrible storm going on at the moment with all kinds of cells all, all over the place. And you can basically just do that and draw pretty pictures. You can also uh, change the settings as well. So this is the setting for the heavy storm. That's the setting for the moderate storm. I'm, I'm not going to go in and change all those. Ain't nobody got time for that. Um, so there we go. Uh, so what I've done is now I've drawn all of these uh, different weather phenomenon in different places all around the Gulf. So our entire flight now from Dubai across the Doha will have all of these uh, horrible storms all the way across. Um, and now you can go to view briefing and it asks whether you uh, are sure because you can't go back from this point. So it's compiling the weather briefing. Now, the interesting thing is, is that um, when it's doing this weather briefing thing, um, it's obviously getting the weather from somewhere because it does give you fairly realistic real weather. So, for example, in Dubai and Doha uh, and Qatar at the moment, it's July. It's it's hotter than the sun. Um, and actually, if we have a look at the uh, weather, it's actually giving a fairly realistic weather. So it's saying 224, 22 knots. It's very windy because, as, as you would imagine, it's kind of stormy. It's overcast. Uh, but the temperature does seem to be kind of about right. Um, 35 Celsius and then the arrival into uh, Qatar again. Thunderstorms. The weather looks kind of right. The wind looks kind of right. Um, and again, the temperature looks kind of right as well. 37 degrees in a big thunderstorm where there was kind of high winds and rain bringing the temperature down a little bit, um, you would expect it to be 
at the very least high 30s if not 40s in that part of the gulf at this time of the year so even though it's kind of generating the weather um, in a in a kind of fake way, it does seem to be giving us weather that's quite realistic. It would be interesting to see if we gave it uh, perhaps, I don't know, a fog situation in New York in February. Is it going to give you realistic temperatures then? I don't know. That's maybe a video for another day. So there we go. You can also change the view as well. So you can look at the weather radar and you can zoom in and zoom out. So if I want to zoom in now on my on my route and I want to have a look at the lightning uh, that's also the weather radar as well so all of these are weather cells that are nasty and we're going to want to stay away from so there you go that is done all that remains now is hit fly now and it will load it up in the sim and let's have a little look and see what it looks like okay so you can actually change the opacity of this little gauge as well so uh, let's just change that to 60 and in fact uh, we don't need that anymore so we can just minimize that that disappears off into the tray uh, one of the things I'm going to do as well is just load up fraps for you just uh, load up fraps in the corner now frame rate is at the moment locked to 30 uh, we have lots of traffic as well in fact you can see a lot down there ultimate traffic so I'm going to just uh, ditch that because I don't want that to uh, kind of get in the way I don't want anyone to fly into us or taxi into us while we're just doing this little test um, let me just set up the aeroplane for a departure. So uh, at the moment, we've got tons of fuel. So we probably want to get rid of some of the fuel because we're never going to take off otherwise. Now, one thing you will notice is that the frame rates are pretty good. Um, we've got a pretty big beastly machine for airline to sim. It's, uh, it's a Titan. Uh, it's uh, overclocked to 4.7 uh, gig on the CPU. It's uh, an i7-3970X. Uh, it's, uh, we've got a pretty big beastly machine for airline to sim. It's a uh, Core i7-3970X, overclocked to nearly 5 gigahertz. Uh, I'm running a Titan GPU, which is 6 uh, gig. So it's a pretty big beastie machine. Um, now, my suspicion is, is that if we loaded up this kind of weather theme in Active Sky Next, uh, I'm not sure we'd be seeing the frames hovering at nearly 30. Uh, I think it may well be a bit worse than that. So uh, this is kind of encouraging in the sense that the frame rates don't seem to be absolutely hammered. Uh, by this uh, horrible weather. One unfortunate thing that you can see is that uh, the weather radar is not picking anything up. Now, the PMDG weather radar, as far as I understand, pretty much only works with Active Sky. Um, the Aerosoft Airbus, I think that's designed to work with different ones. So it could well be that uh, that one uh, works and this one doesn't. I don't know. Maybe somebody could do a little test with the Airbus and let us know how to get on. So. Let's launch off into the nasty weather, 50%, uh, which is about there. I'm going to even vaguely attempt to try and do uh, a half-decent takeoff, so that's 50%. Throttle's coming up. Okay, keep the center line under our left leg. That's what uh, Johnny, our 777 guys, told me. Uh, bear in mind, by the way, that we've only uh, kind of done uh, a tiny amount of training on 777 so far. So. There we go. Oh, we've got an enormous tailwind. Okay, V1, rotate. One, two, three, four. On the rotation. Okay, climbing up, climbing up, climbing up. All right, autopilot in. Oh, there we go, autopilot in. Wasn't trimmed properly. All right, so we're climbing away. LNAV and VNAV is armed. Frame rate's being hurt a little bit for kind of 28 29 now this is a situation that I probably wouldn't want to load up normally in the airplane because just would not be very enjoyable with all these cloud layers and the frame rate being absolutely spanked we're still getting 28 29 even though we are climbing into a thunderstorm all right so we're over the acceleration altitude now and the airplane is accelerating so we'll bring the oh, the gears not up uh, we'll bring the flaps up to one. Okay, so frame rate is kind of back at 30 now. 
and bring the flaps all the way up now. Okay. So, the Mooney, we're going to stop at 4,000, so I'm going to hit that. That will keep the climb going. And what I'm also going to do is I'm just going to uh, slow us down, and that should give us uh, a huge rate of climb. And we'll try and get above this uh, pretty horrible weather. So remember, this is obviously uh, Rex now, which is generating all of this. This is uh, nothing to do with Active Sky. Just going to keep the climb going. So I've intervened on the speed, which is why it's saying VNAV speed, and it's giving us a big rate of climb. All the way up to 18,000. So, up into the clouds. Frame rate's okay. I mean, I'm... You know, I like it locked at 30, normally. Um, that's kind of what I like to fly with. But this is alright. This is... I mean, it's perfectly flyable. It's not as smooth as I would like it, but... It's probably as good as we're going to get. We are climbing into about five different cloud layers. But it's, it's interesting to see how Rex is generating the storms compared to how it's done by uh, compared to how it's done by Active Sky Next. So let's hop outside. Kind of nice, huh? I don't know how sold I am on the... Uh... I'm not sure... You see, you're getting those kind of square clouds and stuff, which I'm not crazy about. You're getting a big line in the scenery. I'm not crazy about that, but... Ah, finally, some blue sky. Finally. So you see now that we're kind of passing through this, see the frame rates now, it's suddenly become a lot smoother. We're kind of back to uh, normal. Real shame, though, that the... Uh, just climbing at the transition altitude now. In fact, we'll keep the climb going up to... Uh, what did we say, 37,000? Doesn't matter, it's only a little... Uh, a little test. I'm not uh, demonstrating demonstrating my uh, flying skills in this. If my triple uh, seven seven pilot Johnny's watching, God, he'll be he'll have his head in his hands. Good Jesus, what is what is he doing? Sorry, Johnny. Um, so there you go, some nice cloud formations there. Okay, so there you go, guys. There is a quick uh, run-through of Rex Weather Architect, uh, which you can buy. I don't think it's on the uh, the normal places you can buy it now. You know, Sim Market normally sell Rex stuff um, and other places. As far as I understand, you've got to buy it directly from Rex through their online store. Uh, but it's an interesting product, and it certainly does what it says, um, and does have the ability to get really quite interesting weather patterns 
um, without absolutely hammering your frame rate. I'm a kind of 30 frame rate locked kind of guy, and I tend to avoid situations where I can't fly at that frame rate. Um, so it's not something I would probably want to do too much, um, but I think this could be for a lot of people. So there you go. Rex Weather Architects. Give it a go. Right, I'm done. Uh, I will see you again for another vlog soon. Have yourself a great day, guys. Bye-bye.